Hey everyone, Roland Dell here. Decided to do a little video for idiots. That is the how God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Um, I was being with my Lord this morning and I was thinking about <clears throat> my childhood and my young adulthood and um, how I have uh, been walking with the Lord for some time now, really since I was a teenager, I'm going to guess around 16, and uh, of course my mother was a woman's Bible study teacher in the Presbyterian Church, and my father, uh, he's still a deacon, and they're in their 80s now, and uh, the person that um, heads up the uh, Presbyterian Church, the PCA, is a man by the name of Dr. R.C. Sproul. And I was been thinking about this for some time. Dr. Sproul said that um, he was talking about experiences of the Lord Jesus Christ, how God speaks to you. And he said that uh, most of the world, um, God works through our circumstances, which of course he does because the Lord is control, in control of all circumstances. And he was referencing Watchman Nee, who I deeply respect, uh, the spiritual man. And Nee is talking about moving in the spirit, uh, being shown, um, the Lord speaking to us and, and different happenings on a spiritual level. And Dr. Sproul said something to the effect of the Western mind doesn't work that way. Well, the problem is, I, as I see it, is um, the Western mind, the natural mind, if you will, uh, uh, can't receive the things of God, the scripture tells us. So, of course, it doesn't work that way because the Lord Jesus Christ works in spirit. For those called according to his purpose, for the elect's sake, for the people, it, it is his church. Jesus Christ builds his church through his Holy Spirit. So the mind has very, very little to do with it, except it be enlightened by the Holy Spirit. This is what the spiritual man does. He is enlightened. He has a knowing by God of truth uh, to his soul through the Holy Spirit. And as he grows and is made more Christ-like, being regenerated as he pushes in uh, with Christ in his spirit, this is talking about the person that is born again in the spirit, he starts to become more Christ-like and he starts to walk closer with the Lord um, and, and the spiritual knowing and oida. And... The differences I, that I can see, this is why I say I'm making this tape for idiots today, is the Western mind, the uh, natural man, tries to assimilate all this stuff in his head in theology. Uh, I saw a post the other day, said, follow me on Twitter, and the first thing that somebody said is, oh, we have to teach them better than that. Well, you know, when you're teaching uh how to follow God and all that is religion. That is what I call a religion. You're doing something towards the Lord, trying to follow the Lord, but you're doing it in your natural mind. And God doesn't work that way. God works through his spirit. So there's a disconnect today between the people of the Lord that actually very few disciples around that actually know function and move in his Holy Spirit and the theologian, if you will, the one that uh, takes it on board uh, between his ears, um, compartmentalizes uh, different doctrines. This is God works this way, God works that way, doesn't work this way, doesn't work that way uh, in his mind. But God, again, doesn't work this way. He works through spirit. That's why Jesus says, follow me. To be my disciple, you must follow me. You must. It also says you must hate your mother, father, sister, brother, husband, wife, even your own life, even to follow me. And this is talking about a condition of the heart, not 
a theological position. And I really believe that <clears throat> if you're trying to follow the Lord uh, in a from a purely theological position, and let's just say for a moment that uh, you do have the Holy Spirit, well, that's fine, but God is going to quicken the truth to you if you're his and if your heart truly seeks him, even within a uh, church system, even within um, systematic theologies. But God doesn't work in systematic theologies because God is God. God works by spirit to the individual that he has elected and chosen before the foundation of the earth. And there's nothing that the natural man intellect can do about that because it's God's work. It's not natural man's work. I see a lot of things like fulfilling the great commission, you know, which was given to the apostles to spread the gospel. They were empowered by the Lord Jesus Christ to spread the gospel. People take something in their own flesh, in their own power and think they're doing something for the Lord. But see, this isn't how God works. God works by you following him and in obedience. Now, it's fine to have sound doctrine uh, in your understanding, but the thing that we have to learn to do first is follow the Lord. And then he reveals the uh, proper position, proper theological position to us, to our hearts when we seek him first. We do not even do that independent of the Lord showing us. And this is what religion does. It works independent of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is uh, what I call the false church. It's a counterfeit. It's very close. It may be even spot on doctrinally um, in their understanding. They may be right on target. But if they're not actually moving and living in that spirit, in that power of truth, they don't actually, if they haven't received that especially, then they're still not his. It doesn't matter how how um, how correct they can be and, and, and what comes out of their mouth. The, the point is that it is a condition of their heart, and only God knows the human heart, and only God writes who is in the book of life and who is not. It is a not, it is not a sign up for Jesus thing. The Holy Spirit, the Father himself, the Bible says, draws them unto Christ. And if the Father himself is not drawing you into Christ, there's really nothing you can do about it. You're, you're stuffed. You're stuffed. You have to be drawn by the Lord and the Holy Spirit to the point of salvation. And then after you're born again of spirit, you have to follow him as a disciple. You have to choose to press on in there on a spiritual level not something of your flesh, but you have to choose to be dependent like a little baby. Uh, I said in another video that uh, the disciples asked him, who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he brought a child and he said, the one that will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is like this little child. He was using that as an example, that they are totally dependent upon the father and that um, their heart, is, is totally after the Lord. They love nothing uh, more than the Father. And that is the one that is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's not the one that has the best theology or the, or the most doctorates. Uh, but this is what man has made it. And it's really not man's fault in the sense that he's made it like that if he's not um, been called of the Lord if he's not chosen, if he's not uh, elect toward salvation to be God, to be one of the sons of God. This is what God is doing. He's building sons and daughters of God. But it's not the natural man's fault in the sense that um, they're not chosen. But, uh, and what I'm trying to say is just to do it on a purely intellectual or theological basis is... Uh, Although you may be blessed because you're following the law of God written on every man's heart, um, you will be blessed in this world because you're trying to follow God's order, but it doesn't mean 
that you're necessarily his. In fact, one of the things the Lord showed me in, in my near drowning episode when I got out of the Coast Guard, Coast Guard was you can do nothing without me. And that's what we have to learn to do. We have to learn to run back to God in everything we do and say, Lord, am I moving with you and your, and your direction? And people that don't have the Holy Spirit within them uh, can't do that. The best you can do is try to follow the scripture or your theological understanding if you do not have the Holy Spirit indwelling within you. And I'm afraid this is what the majority of people do. And I um, <clears throat> just want to say that I, one of my earliest friends became a priest, and I couldn't understand why he didn't. He was a friend, a close friend, but there was a disconnect there, and I couldn't understand really why I didn't want to um, uh, be more associated with me than he was, because I certainly had a love for him, and I think he had a, a certain amount of love for me, but the problem was spiritual. There was a disconnect to their spiritual. Spiritually, one of us was the Lord's, chosen before the foundation of the earth, and the other was not. The other one um, was religious in nature. The other one had a form of godliness, but not the power thereof. And he still moves in that. He still moves in that. And there's a lot of people that move in that. But a disciple only moves towards and into the things of God as they're given power to do, as they're empowered to do by the Holy Spirit. And this is a discerned thing. This is not something that you can teach people. You cannot teach people Jesus Christ. You can teach people Bible, which we all know there's plenty of that around, but you cannot pe teach people into salvation. You cannot teach people into uh, being a Christian. You can't sign up for Jesus. It's a work that God has to choose to do within you. And man tries to work independent of God, and that's a sin. Now, this is what the scripture says about enduring <clears throat> sound doctrine. Uh, when you're missing the mark, when you're fulfilling the Great Commission, like it was given unto you, when it was given unto the apostles, well, which is truth? You know, uh, if you're fulfilling the Great Commission, and God hasn't told you to do that specifically, called you to do that, called you unto that type of ministry, then you're wrong. You're doing it in your flesh. You're doing it independent of the Lord, no matter how good your motives are of preaching Christ and his salvation. The whole point is Christianity, true Christianity, two sons and daughters of God don't have to have theological understanding. They have to have the Holy Spirit working within them. And if you don't have that, we're 100 miles apart. And man tries to tie it all together. Man tries to, natural man tries to say, well, the things you're speaking are sound as far as my doctrinal understanding in this area, but maybe not be sound in their understanding in another area. And that's just simply because some people are, are walking with the Spirit of God and tuned with the Holy Spirit of God, and the other people don't have access to it, and they don't even realize it. They can't realize it because they are indeed dead. So take heart. That's the wonderful thing about knowing Lord Jesus Christ is you don't have to be, uh, have, um, ministry credentials and Bible degrees. You don't have to be endorsed by any man. You can be endorsed only of God and follow the Holy Spirit of God. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you because when you follow the Holy Spirit of God alone, you are choosing to serve one master and by default, you will reject the rest. You may find yourself in the greatest battles with uh, seminary type church people because you're not falling onto their ground you're pressing in with the Lord Jesus Christ yourself and that's what true Christianity is it's a personal relationship has nothing to do with teaching and seminary 
background. Now, it's again, it's good to have sound doctrine to realize that it's only by grace that we're saved. The Lord Jesus Christ teaches us all things. But this, but uh, past that, um, you know, only, only true disciples are taught of God. The other people, again, don't have access to that. And um, the reason I can see these things is because I have, a, I have eyes to see them. And I've watched it. I've watched it for years. And I have to say that it was very confusing to me. People that would claim his name but yet had no experience of the Lord Jesus Christ working within them. And there are some people that start off with the Lord, but uh, like the shallow ground soon depart from him. And um, in my ignorance, I tried to do something for Jesus. I tried to be a part of a church body and, you know, um, uh, uh, support the mission boards and reach out and love, agape love and all these things you hear uh you know, reach out to the poor and all. Well, you know, Jesus did teach to do that, but it's going to be, <clears throat> that's uh, that's what his people are going to do naturally. You don't have to have a pro program to teach you to do that if you're the Lord's. And I didn't understand. I didn't understand that. But now the Lord's given me like to see. It really has nothing to do with us or our education if we are indeed the Lord's. It has to do with his grace and his enlightenment alone. Sorry, Dr. Sproul. Good day.